This is something I, I've had conversations with my good friend Dan Plesak, who pitched 18 years in the big leagues as a reliever. We've talked about it a lot. And you've had managers that were really good at this. What is this that we're talking about? It's not just managing a bullpen. That's what you see as a fan when you go to a game. When a reliever comes in, the manager gives them the ball. What really irks relievers is when they warm up, they don't get in the game. Then they're told to get up again. They warm up. Maybe they don't get in a game. And then eventually they get in, and now they're exhausted. This, is, this has happened before in Major League Baseball games. This is the stuff you don't see that matters behind the scenes. Bo Porter, former manager of the Houston Astros, this was part of your job. So, Dan, as a former reliever, give me a manager who did this aspect of managing a bullpen the best in your, in your career. Jim Leland. Why, why was he so good? Um, because he was very cognizant of getting you up and giving you time to get up. Like... He, he took responsibility to, to accept that, okay, you were out there paying attention to a game. And, and I will say this, as a reliever, a lot of times when you're not ready, it's not the manager's fault, it's the reliever's fault. Because I mm -hmm. think each reliever, when a game starts, you kind of know what is your area of the game. If you're a long reliever, get your rear end down there when the game starts, and you have to be ready innings one through five. Okay. If you're a middle guy, a setup guy, you can kind of wait till the fifth or sixth inning. And I think what Jim Leland did is he, he you kind of knew when that phone rang. A any bullpen, any good bullpen will tell you when that phone rings, guys know who it is. To me, two big keys. Try not to warm up a reliever more than twice during a game. Okay. So if you get a guy up hot in the fifth inning and then he sits back down and then you get him back up in the seventh inning, a pretty good idea. Try to get that guy in that game a second time. Now, it doesn't always work that way. But what good managers do and good bullpen coaches do, Bo Porter would call down and say, you were the bullpen coach. Hey, get Dan up, but just tell him to get loose. Don't get hot. So that means, like, get up, and that means just get ready. Just throw a little bit. But don't, you know, because we not, might not bring you in. We want to see how this inning's going to play out. And that way you don't waste a lot of bullets. So number two, don't allow a long time to lapse in between getting the same reliever up in a game. Okay, I think what most bullpen guys dislike the most, if you're going to get up and you get hot in the third inning, you get up, you get hot, you give them the hat, you're like, hey, you're ready. They don't put you in. Then you sit there in the third inning, the fourth inning, the fifth inning, and all of a sudden you've kind of used some bullets already. And then the callback comes back and they get you back up in the seventh. It's hard to recreate that again once you've fully gotten hot and ready to come into a game. Okay, so uh, you don't have to name a manager for me. Leland was the best. Did you ever have a manager that struggled? No, I was, I was really lucky. I was with some really good managers. Okay, okay experienced good. Experienced managers. I never really had a bad experience in a bullpen. But this is a top priority for a manager? How would you describe it? It's probably the number one priority for a manager because your, big, your biggest decision in the game is when you take the pitcher out of the game whether it's the starter or bringing in another reliever. And even when you listen to Dan give his, his observation of going to the bullpen, it just tells you how important it is to your ball club. That's why, like, for me, when I start to think about managing the bullpen, it's something that from the beginning stages of me being a manager, as I grew as a manager, this is an area that I was very focused on getting better at. The first thing you want to do is you want to match your guys up better. You want, to put, you want to put them in position to be successful. So you want to know your relievers. If I had Dan down in my bullpen and I know that, you know, he dominates left-handers, why would I bring him into a situation where he's going to face three righties? Makes sense. So my job is to make sure that I match him up. And I could not agree with you more, Dan. If you get a guy warmed up, you want to make sure that you do not warm him up twice. So I'm in total agreement with that. If I get a guy up once and I sit him back down, when we call down the next time, he's going into the game. The next one for me is I try to stay away from using the guy three days in a row. And the reason you want to try to stay away from using the guy three days in a row is because you understand the wear and tear of using the guy three days in a row means that he got up three times and he got into the game three times. Mm. So you start to look at that. That's almost like four appearances, you know, consecutively. The next, one, the next one for me, which it's really big because you really can't quantify it, it's red line pitches. 
And I always track this. When I mean by red line pitches, meaning the stress of the inning. What is the leverage here? What hitters did he face? Did he go through the middle of the lineup? And it was 22 pitches, and it was man on second and third. He had to strike this guy out. He gets to the dugout, and now that guy takes a big sigh of relief like, oh, I got it done. The last thing you want to do is send that guy back out there because he had the sigh of relief. Not so, all pitches are created equal. Exactly. I love and that. the last one, which is probably the biggest one of all, the manager has to communicate with his relievers. It's the satellite. It's the one area of the field that is a satellite location. That's why, to me, the, the, your most important hire as a manager is your bullpen coach. Not your bench coach? No, the bench coach right next to me. <laughs> okay. It's the bullpen coach because he, he's the only coach that is on an island by himself away from everybody else. It's the, it's, it's the number one place where fires start on the team. They start in the bullpen. They end up in the clubhouse. If you don't have the right leader of men in your bullpen, it, will, it, it, it can tear your team down, especially if things don't go accordingly. If you're getting guys up wow. too early or too late and those conversations start down in the bullpen, before you know it as the manager, you have a fire on your hand. My biggest pet peeve in a bullpen, and I did this for a living for 18 years, and I was adamant about it towards the end of my career, let's say the last eight or nine years, there is no excuse for a reliever to be out there sitting. The phone rings and Bogue says for you to get up. You don't know where your glove is. You haven't stretched yet. You don't know where your ball is. They call down and say, hey, Greg, get up. And you spend two minutes looking for your glove. <laughs> You're going to do this and stretch. Wait, this really this oh, happens? pet peeve of mine. So but you saw this happen a lot. I, I would say to you if that happened, I said, let me tell you something. I live out here in the bullpen. You can't continue to do this. You need to be ready. You have to assume when that phone rings, if it's at your part of the game, you better have your stretching done, bring your tubings, bring your weights, whatever you got to do. Do your sit-ups, do your push-ups. When that phone rings, don't waste the precious two or three minutes walking around finding your glove and doing all these stretches and bands. You've had a lot of time. You've had enough time while the team was hitting so that you're warm. When that phone rings, you can get Does up. Does everyone uh, give the hat, I'm ready, uh, pretty much the same amount of no, time? No, they don't. And is that important for a manager to It know? is. And, 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 you, and you know as a manager, when you've had a guy up and you're like, hey, is the guy ready? You know he's out there. And those are little subtle things that tell you the guy doesn't really want a part of a game. And it's because there's, if you really wanted a game, there, are, there were many times that I wasn't close to ready. But I knew I had those eight warm-up pitches that if he's calling out for me to come out to get Barry Bonds or to get Tony Gwynn and he get critic, I would say, yeah, I'm ready. Because I knew I had eight warm-up pitches. Because if he wanted me to get in quickly to get ready, you could get ready in those eight warm-ups. But you could. Other guys, not so fast, right? right? And, but yes. you can't manage everybody like that. And that's why, as a, as a manager, that communication factor becomes even more important of understanding each and every last one of your guys, how much time do they need to get ready so it actually helps you make that decision to help them. The, the biggest problem so with relievers is knowing how to properly warm up, too. Quick. Just, it's, it's, it's simple. It, it really is simple. See, I wish I had Dan in my bullpen. I mean, yeah. Sounds like a demo. <laughs> How to warm up and get ready as fast as possible for a big moment in the game.